The poet Siegfried Sassoon wrote this poem on the 27th of August, 1924. Above the voiceful windings of a river, an old green slab of simply graven stone shuns notice, overshadowed by a yew. Here Vaughan lies dead, whose name flows on for ever through pastures of the spirit washed with dew, and starlit with eternities unknown. Sassoon wrote his poem after visiting the grave of the metaphysical poet Henry Vaughan in the churchyard of St. Bridget's Church, Llansan Fried, near Brecon, overlooking Vaughan's beloved river, the Usk, or as he calls it, the Isker. But, Isker, whensoe'er those shades I see, and thy loved arbours must no more know me, when I am laid to rest hard by thy streams, and my sun sets where first it sprang in beams, I'll leave behind me such a large, kind light as shall redeem thee from oblivious night. Henry Vaughan, who was born in 1621 and died in 1695, was the major Welsh poet of the Commonwealth period in our nation's history. He lived almost all of his life in Newton Farm, a house just a few hundred yards from the church, which belonged to his mother, Denise. She had married in 1611, at the age of 18, Thomas Vaughan, who was rather older than herself. He was the younger son of William Vaughan of Treetower Court, which gave Henry some noble connections, including the Earl of Worcester, the Duke of Beaufort, and the Earl of Pembroke. And Henry Vaughan was a third cousin thrice removed of the poet George Herbert, who died in 1633. Henry and his twin brother Thomas were taught from the age of 11 by the Reverend Matthew Herbert, rector of Llangatog, and in 1638 they went to Jesus College, Oxford. Henry left without taking a degree, but began studying law before returning to Llansan Fried when civil war broke out between Parliament and Charles I in August 1642. Henry became a cavalry lieutenant in the King's army and fought in a battle near Chester in 1645. On his return to Llansan Fried in 1646, Henry Vaughan underwent a spiritual awakening, which he attributed to the holy life and verse of George Herbert, particularly his collection of poems, The Temple. In that year, Vaughan married Catherine Wise, whom he met walking in Priory Grove in Brecon, Vaughan's favourite place of retirement. This meeting in a beloved place was enough to wake to ecstasy the living liar, and Vaughan was moved to write poetry. Henry Vaughan published a number of collections of poems and prose, a mixture of devotional writings and reflections on the countryside around Llansan Fried that he loved so much, especially the River Usk. In fact, Vaughan called himself Swan of Usk. The Waterfall With what deep murmurs through time's silent stealth doth thy transparent cool and watery wealth here flowing fall and chide and call, as if his liquid loose retinue stayed, lingering, and were of this steep place afraid. The common pass, where clear as glass all must descend, not to an end, but quickened by this deep and rocky grave, rise to a longer course, more bright and brave. Dear stream, dear bank, where often I have sat and pleased my pensive eye, why, since each drop of thy quick store runs thither whence it flowed before, should poor souls fear a shade or night, who came, sure, from a sea of light? Or since those drops are all sent back, so sure to thee, that none doth lack, why should frail flesh doubt any more, that what God takes he'll not restore? O useful element and clear, my sacred wash and cleanser here, my first consigner unto those fountains of life where the Lamb goes. What sublime truths and wholesome themes lodge in thy mystical deep streams. 
such as dull man can never find, unless that spirit leads his mind, which first upon thy face did move, and hatched all with his quickening love. As this loud brook's incessant fall in streaming rings restagnates all, which reach by course the bank, and then are no more seen, just so pass men. O oh, my invisible estate, my glorious liberty, still late, thou art the channel my soul seeks, not this with cataracts and creeks. This is the Henry Vaughan Physic Garden looking a bit bleak and damp in winter time. His gravestone in Clansan Fried Churchyard reads Henricus Vaughan, Silurus MD, but there is no record of him ever training to be a doctor. The only evidence we have of him training to be a doctor is in a letter he wrote to his cousin John Aubrey, in which he affirmed, My profession also is physic which I have practised now for many years with good success, I thank God. It seems that he attended the sick in Clansan Fried and wider afield as a self-taught physician. As Henry Vaughan travelled the hills and valleys of the Brecon Beacons and down into Glamorgan, where he spent a month, as has been written, one can picture him on his hardy Welsh pony, drenched in the mountain mist, close-hatted, big cloaked, riding alone and looking abroad with those mild eyes which were a naturalist's for earth and sky and a mystic's for the spiritual world. I walked the other day to spend my hour into a field where I sometimes had seen the soil to yield a gallant flower. But winter now had ruffled all the bower and curious store I knew there heretofore. Yet I, whose search loved not to peep and peer in the face of things, thought with myself there might be other springs besides this here, which, like cold friends, sees us but once a year, and so the flower might have some other bower. Then taking up what I could nearest spy, I digged about that place where I had seen him to grow out, and by and by, I saw the warm recluse alone to lie, where fresh and green he lived of us unseen. Many a question intricate and rare did I there strow, but all I could extort was that he now did there repair such losses as befell him in this air, and would ere long come forth most fair and young. This passed, I threw the clothes quite o'er his head, and stung with fear of my own frailty, dropped down many a tear upon his bed. Then sighing whispered, Happy are the dead, what peace doth now rock him asleep below? And yet, how few believe such doctrine springs from a poor root, which all the winter sleeps here underfoot, and hath no wings to raise it to the truth and light of things, but is still trod by every wandering clod. O thou, whose spirit did at first inflame and warm the dead, and by a sacred incubation fed with life this frame, which once had neither being, form, nor name, grant that I may so thy steps track here below, that in these masks and shadows I may see thy sacred way, and by those hid ascents climb to that day which breaks from thee, who art in all things, though invisibly. Show me thy peace, thy mercy, love and ease, and from this care where dreams and sorrows reign, lead me above, where light, joy, leisure and true comforts move without all pain. There, hid in thee, show me his life again, at whose dumb urn thus all the year I mourn. Henry Vaughan lived through turbulent times with the Civil War, the execution of Charles I, and the loss of the church, with priests being evicted and church buildings closed. One of his most famous poems was set to music by Hubert Parry during another turbulent time in British history, the First World War. In My Soul There Is a Country, 
Henry Vaughan directs us to a country where a winged sentry stands guard. The winged sentry that awaits us is Peace herself. The lines of battle, the soldier in ranks and files, are no longer commanded by military men, but by one born in a manger. All are invited to draw near to the flower of peace, a rose which never withers.